Welcome to China Manufacturing Decoded from Sophieast, the podcast where we take you through some of the major topics facing importers and manufacturers in China today. Welcome back, listener. You're listening to episode 43 of the podcast. Adrian from Sophieast here, and I'm joined by our CEO Renault, who's going to be talking you through preventive maintenance. You'll see why it makes sense to keep any machinery in the factory up and running in a nearly new condition, and how making a preventive maintenance plan provides a lot of benefits for a business down the line. So let's jump into that. Hello again, Renault. Thanks for joining me. Hey, hi Adrian. How are you doing? Yeah, yeah, fine. Thank you. You? Yeah,、uh, getting to the end of the week soon. I hope. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, we do record at the end of the week, so、uh, it's always、uh, it's always been a long week, and、uh, just sort of getting through it. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. What I wanted to do was to explore preventive maintenance in a bit more detail today. So,、mm-hmm. firstly, could you introduce what preventive maintenance is, please? Sure. Actually. First, I'm going to say what bad factories do、right. is they don't take any preventive actions. They buy a piece of equipment. They might not have、um, uh, how to say the right people to keep it up.、Um, they, they might, you know, it might be a little bit too high tech for them, maybe, or just too 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 complicated. They don't have the experience with that. Okay, they 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 work with the、um, equipment manufacturer to set it up to get it running. Uh, they have, they know how to、um, how, how to set it up, hopefully, and do the changeovers. And then, you know, one day,、uh, maybe a tool that is loaded in the in the equipment, or maybe the equipment itself is down, is no longer working. So then, it's all about reactive maintenance, you know, repairing.、Mm. Okay, it's down right now. It's not allowing us to 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 do any production. And okay, so what what are we doing? Let's hurry up to repair it, and we might have to buy some、uh, spare parts. Maybe、uh, oh, we don't have them here in stock. Oh, we're not even thinking that this piece of equipment would go down ever. You know, oh, the manufacturer didn't tell us that it would go down. Okay,、mm. so let's let's rush through that. Let's call the manufacturer. Maybe they maybe it's still in, in, under some kind of warranty. They can come and. And fix it for free or whatever, and then it's back on its feet. It's it's you know the the the, the equipment is back,、um, is up and running, and then after a while again, you know, it is in need of repair. And every time it's a little bit of a scramble. Hey, how to do and so on. So,、uh, preventive maintenance is what good factories do, basically to to. To minimize the amount of unplanned downtime, so there is still going to be some downtime. Downtime, sorry.、Uh, when, for example, a piece of machinery, you need to,、uh, I don't know, maybe it says every every week you, you know, you make sure it's stopped and 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 plugged and everything, and then you 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 open this part, you clean it,、um, you check this, 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 and、um, you know, and 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 then you、um, you put it back in.、Um, In normal、um, working condition, basically, it's 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 fine for running again. That's a little bit of downtime.、Uh, sometimes it's more,、uh, it, it's much longer downtime. For example, maybe if the manufacturer says that the the mean time to repair is、uh, six months,、um, you know, and the first thing that breaks usually is that piece of tooling. Then you know,、uh, three months in, you already have the piece of tooling ready to be、uh, replaced. And you keep checking it, and maybe more and more often as you get close to six months, and maybe, maybe at six months you just say, okay, I'm not going to take any chances because now it's, it's pretty likely to break soon, and you just replace it. You know,、um, this is the kind of things that that are done、uh, mm. by preventive maintenance、uh, people, and they、um, and it, it there is some overlap with 5S, obviously when you. You clean and you check that that things are 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 okay as they should. At the you know at the same time the the operators hopefully can 
can you know can clean the machinery can check from time to time hey maybe check the heat here when it's been running the whole day maybe check the for the vibrations if there's excess vibrations it might mean that something is is not functioning properly for some reason or is starting already to break uh, we don't see it yet but for example vibrations is a, a relatively uh, common way to 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 pick up on these kinds of things right so mm. if there is um so 5S and preventive maintenance, both of them are activity-based uh, operations. It's not result-based. So you need to set up a plan and, and have people, you know, give some standards and have people do it, basically. The, and there's a lot of um, lot of overlap uh, at the basic level. 5S helps with preventive maintenance. It's kind of part of it, actually. Mm, okay. And you mentioned the plan, and that's what we're going to come on to. But before we move on to that, I just wanted to ask, I mean, all of this, you might think it might sound expensive. Is that the case in comparison to, you know, reactive maintenance? Well, both are, you know, come with costs, obviously. And so the benefits, you know, you do preventive maintenance to have much fewer issues when a piece of equipment goes down as a surprise, right? When it comes down as a surprise, it might have been making bad parts for one day and mm. people you know, did not notice it before, but it was already kind of, there was already some something wrong. Uh, it can have an impact on quality. And then when you make bad parts for, for a day, that might eat all of the profit of the factory for the, the entire month. Plus, well, we need to reorder the, the, the materials of the, co- the, the, the components. We need to, uh, to, to wait, we need to reprocess it. There is an impact on the customer often, right? And then you need to, um, you're in firefighting mode, you, you, you're expediting this production because it's late and the customer is, is pushing you hard and it, it messes up your whole production planning and everything is less, um, less efficient. Uh, it forces you to do more changeovers and things like that, for example. So that's um, that. That's one way of, of seeing it. Um, and obviously, also when when a piece of equipment goes down as a surprise, um, it impacts production. Um, you know, you and in some cases, if there's no no inventory, or, I mean, there's little inventory, too little for for that. Um, you know, you might have 20 people sort of out of work, Id- mm. idling, you know, just waiting for repair. So imagine the pressure on the, the maintenance guys who have to repair now, right? Uh, so it's really not pleasant. Um, it's And that's quite costly. Uh, not mm. to mention when it goes down, uh, often there are more serious damages when, if you do that too often to the, the piece of equipment. So the lifetime of your asset is shorter. And um, so you, you, if, you, if you purchase a piece of machinery and you say, okay, this is gonna last for 10 years, but actually you just let it go down, go down, go down on its own without paying any attention, giving it any, any, any care. Maybe after three or four years, you have to get rid of it. It's no longer working, right? Um, so, that's that's quite expensive, right? Mm, mm. Um, and and the the, um, the plan with the, the idea about preventing maintenance. Hey, it's like going to the dentist. You know, are you gonna wait until your your your, your you know one of your teeth is gonna be really hurting you, and and then you have to to pull it all out or something really bad like that? Uh, or you go to the dentist regularly, and he's gonna say, oh, you're starting to have a cavity here. Okay, let me do something. Pop. Okay, yeah. it's nearly as new. You know, nearly as new. And um, that's a little bit the, 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 the idea in a simplified way. Mm, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. So that's a lot of good reasons to consider implementing it. I guess when we talk about the plan, it's probably best to start off with some example scenarios. So I don't know if you've got anything you, you can share. Yeah, I, I wrote an article about that, I think, last year um, on the blog. And uh, we, we'll, we'll send a, new, um, a link to it. Yeah. But um, th- there's different ways to, to do it, and different 
different uh, formats, right? Um, so, for for example, if you um, if you if you think, okay, there's there's a filter, let's say air filter, um, on 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 a piece of equipment, and there's oil and things like that. Okay, you need to look at these. Um, these these uh, consumables and the weights um, how to say keep uh, you need to keep the filters clean uh, you need to to check for oil leaks uh, any other leak and so on right and this yeah as I said is basically 5s keeping things clean and at the same time checking if any um, source of you know dirt or grease or anything like that is actually the sign of um, a, a deeper problem, right? So you, these little things can be done daily. You know, the, again, cleaning the filter, checking for oil leaks, and so on. Uh, then the certain parts of the equipment that you might want a technician to check weekly. So the daily thing is more by the operator side, right? Um, no need to have a, a technician or an engineer do that. Um, then maybe once a week you have a technician come in and uh, look at some mechanical elements you know maybe the bells and the pulleys um, and just to make sure everything's fine you know so he really needs to get the, the the machine down you know completely stopped open it up uh check everything okay okay fine or oh it's starting to be um fraying or starting to um to look a little bad or whatever okay let let's make sure we have something in uh, in inventory uh ready to replace it and then uh, you know uh, make a note to uh, maybe check it more carefully uh going forward right then um daily weekly is like time based and then there's certain actions that can be uh, age based meaning how many cycles or how many hours of operation of the machine so it's like a car you know uh, every x years you have to 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 bring it for uh, for a checkup every uh, i don't know what is it every 6 months or or, or 10 usually an, or... An, an annual service or based on a number of miles or kilometers that you've right. done yeah yeah and it depends on the, the car and so on right maybe yes two two years or fifty thousand km or something but then more um more 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 frequently um maybe every uh, every six months or ten thousand km then maybe oil change you know so same thing on a piece of equipment in, in, in a factory. I mean, these kinds of things don't, uh, um, you know, are not that different. Mm. Um, and maybe, you know, certain parts like the, the seals, the, 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 the O-rings, the whatever, some accessories, some valves can be changed after, you know, a lot of cycles. But, you know, there's a certain time when it comes to say, hey, this is now relatively likely to uh, to malfunction or, 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 or totally fail to do its job. So let's just get it out. And this way we keep the machine in good condition, you know, as close as possible to being new, in new mm -hmm. condition. That's, that's the, um, that's the objective, you know, maintenance technicians often say that, hey, it's got to be as new, you know, as much as possible. Right, you don't just let it deteriorate and degrade and so on. No, no, no. This is um, this is a nice piece of machinery. Let's take good care of it. It's like a car. I mean, you buy a nice uh, a nice car, um, you know, and 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 you think, hey, I, I I want it to still be operational in five years, in ten years, and I also still want it to look good and I want it to run nicely and so on. It's this is the the same kind of idea. A lot of similarities, um, mm. and then sometimes it's a bit more like a process control plan, uh, where um, it's 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 very much okay for for this process or this asset, or this this piece of equipment. Um, every you know every day do this, and then every. Um, Every, or every two hours do this, every day do this, every two days do this and so on. 
uh, a little bit differently, but it's it will show up uh, more 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 clearly if people open up the um, that the that article with some examples because it's kind of hard to describe here. <laughs> yeah, no, I I understand. I would urge everybody to check the show notes for the uh, for the links that I'll be adding in for for what you're talking about, and in order to get a good idea of the the type of plan as well we actually do provide a template that people can download right so uh we'll also give a link to that and you can grab your own version of it it's uh, an excel sheet and have a look at it yeah absolutely and mm. if maybe some of your suppliers <laughs> you notice that they're always surprised when a uh, machine goes down they're always surprised when oh yeah well this time it doesn't work the, the, the way it should. There is a little bit of a difference. We didn't see it. Well, that, you know, one of the root causes is probably the absence of a preventive maintenance plan. Right. right? So um, that, that, that's, that's a good template to, to give them and then request okay. that they go ahead and fill it out. Okay. So let's say we've got the template, we're going to implement a preventive maintenance plan in our Chinese factory, or maybe a factory elsewhere as well. What sort of challenges do you think the listener can expect when they're trying to do this? Wow. Um, <laughs> are you kidding? You need to stop the machine to check it up. Hey, we're too busy. You know, um, mm. that's just the way it is. Uh, production people um, on their own will often tend to to run the, the, the equipment to, to death, basically, <laughs> right? And um, you and, and and of course when it goes down, well, for them it's an excuse. Well, yeah, the guys maintenance they don't do a good job, whatever, you know. It, and it took day it took, it, it took them half a day to, to put it back up. So of course you know, our efficiencies are down and blah, blah, but it's not our fault, you know? So it's easy to point the finger at the other guys. Mm. Uh, that's why in some, um, in some factories, they, 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 they put the maintenance staff under the production manager so that um, it's all managed in the same house. <laughs> you cannot point fingers, right? Um, so that, 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 is, um, that is an issue. Uh, another common issue is the, the the lack of capable staff so <laughs> some of these tasks are, are, are simple some of these tasks require some experience and this will be more and more true as the you know as, as manufacturers automate their processes and they go toward more high-tech operations mm. and <laughs> The, the, you know, you, uh, and, and the problem is very often when they automate, they don't automate one step at a time, you know, okay, let's automate the unloading and let's, let's make sure that when the, the pot is loaded, the operator doesn't have to do anything and blah, 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 you know. Um, and at the end, hey, let's also automate the loading and like with a vision system that will position the 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 part the, the the arm that we grab the part exactly as as is necessary to grab the part and blah 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 that that's um that's much higher tech actually and the more high tech and the more uh single points of failure you have in your process uh, the more often it's likely to be to be down and um, i've seen some some very impressive automation projects but you know, thirty percent, forty percent, fifty percent of the time, it's not working. It's down. People are still mm. um, running around, and oh, you know, it's down. Okay, let's do something. What? What's the problem? It's here. It's here. Okay, up, oh, and let's get it back running. Okay, and it's um, <laughs> if if you have um, ten small Epson robot arms to to fold your packaging to to fold your your products into the packaging and everything it, maybe it's a little bit uh, a little bit overkill you know uh, so and especially if you go there directly it's definitely overkill now if you take your current process and maybe the on this packaging line there's uh, ten people working okay let's automate this and let's remove one person at a time and let's make sure that 
we really master what we've done and the uptime of, of the equipment is, is, is um, uh, acceptable before we, um, we go higher tech. I bet when you go to a factory and they have a lot of automation, lots of equipment, maybe fewer and fewer staff these days, and you're starting to realize, I don't know if these guys have got a good preventive maintenance plan in place. That's probably something that starts to make you feel very nervous. That's right. That's right. Yes. And the more they rely on the equipment, <laughs> the more nervous buyers mm. should get. Yes. And that, that seems to be the way of things in China these days as we go along. Uh, yeah, it's a trend. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, absolutely. everywhere. Everywhere. Okay. When, when you look at the demographics of China, it, it's, I mean, and, and, and when you hear most um, factory managers, it's, they know it's, uh, it's ahead of them. Okay, so having heard all of this introduction to preventive maintenance, just to close out the podcast, what sort of benefits can we quickly list to, that we can expect when we're using preventive maintenance then? Sure, so basically by um, reducing the amount of downtime and especially the bad surprise, <laughs> last minute I found about it kind of downtime, um, you increase the capacity of the, of the whole factory. So all of the fixed, um, fixed expenses are now helping you make more production. In some cases, much more production, right? So, and, and also since there's fewer um, bad surprises, you don't need to hold that much inventory. An inventory, if you hold, let's say $100,000 of inventory, um, that is costing you, you know, 10 to $25,000, sometimes more in food or some, even some, some electronic components sometimes that get up. So it's very, very fast. Mm. Uh, it, it can be f- 30,000, $35,000, uh, you know, in annual cost every year, right? Plus it's taking your cash that you might want to use for something else. So um, it, it's forcing you to hold more inventory. It's uh, forcing you to promise longer lead times to customers. So it might cost you also some business. And obviously, you know, if you have too many uh, bad surprises, well, customers are impacted from time to time. So you say, oh yeah, sorry, blah, blah, blah. You know, we cannot ship. We're going to be one week late, uh, two weeks late and so on, right? And it kind of compounds if there's a lot of productions that are late. Mm. If you do a smart preventive maintenance together with smart automation, which is kind of my, my, one of my previous points, uh, not going too fast down the road to very high tech equipment, you, um, you really maximize your, um, your workers, the operators, you uh, you improve their you increase their their efficiency their productivity definitely and over time you build your your uh, competences internally on how to do the, the the maintenance okay so this really goes hand in hand with automation it actually allows you you know good maintenance uh, competencies in your company will allow you to go further and faster in automation. Okay, um, I mentioned quality issues. Hey, yeah, this um, this tool was kind of half broken already, but nobody saw it. So we made hours and hours of production of this part and actually all of them are bad. Mm. Uh, we're gonna have to scrap them and reorder and wait and blah, 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 and reprocess and such a waste, right? Uh, very costly. And in some cases, they don't really notice it or they just you know don't want to see it and the customer uh, gets it, so that that that's uh, that's a real problem, right? And also, if you do it, if you do preventive maintenance together with 5S and together with process controls, it, it really reinforces each other. I mean, 5S helps with preventive maintenance and process controls. Um, preventive maintenance does help with process control. Actually, 
when it, you know when it comes to uh, processes that run on equipment, it's pretty much the same thing. To keep the the piece of machinery working as expected, you need to um, keep it in good condition. It's pretty obvious, uh, and also. Process control, yeah, will inform maintenance because uh, by checking this process step often in a certain way, uh, people will notice some deviations. And then if there are people in maintenance who are paying attention to that, uh, they can act when it's still very cheap to, to do something, right? Again, mm -hmm. think of your teeth, you know, it's uh, going to the dentist, right? If... If your dentist knew when you're starting to have a cavity, well, then you know it's so much better than um, going to see him one year later. Yeah. Same same idea. So you 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 get to do maintenance anyway. Now the question is, will you do maintenance on your terms, based on a plan? So you have you put some resources on it, and and you know you know much fewer surprises, or are you going to do it after? The equipment breaks uh, in a rush when everybody says, "Oh, I can't do my my work because I'm waiting for parts. There's no more parts." You know, pick your pick your preference, but for sure, doing only reactive maintenance is going to be more costly. Yeah, and what a compelling way to end the episode. That's excellent, Renault. Thanks for joining me. All right, thanks. Thanks for joining us. If you've enjoyed today's podcast. Don't forget to like and share, and you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all other places that you get your podcasts from. See you next time.